Welcome to this lesson on servant leadership, where we will explore the characteristics of servant leadership and help you make the decision whether this leadership approach will suit your personal needs. The concept of servant leadership was first coined by Robert Greenleaf in 1970. Greenleaf believed that before anyone can lead, they first need to be a servant. To be a true leader, one must ensure people's highest priority needs are being served. For Greenleaf, effective leaders do not lead by power, coercion, or control. Rather they lead through service to those whom they influence, by embracing a high level of moral responsibility. The servant leader continually strives to help subordinates reach their personal best, by supporting, inspiring, and celebrating their development. Servant leadership is both the leadership philosophy, and set of leadership practices. Traditional leadership generally involves the accumulation and exercise of power by one at the top of the pyramid. By comparison, the servant leader shares power, puts the needs of others first, and helps people develop and perform as highly as possible. Servant leaders give attention and priority to their colleagues and the organization. They ensure employees engage in personal development, and they solve their problems. Just imagine for a second what it would be like to be led by someone who spends more time listening than talking, puts your accomplishments in the spotlight instead of boasting about themselves, takes the blame when things turn out differently than expected instead of pointing fingers at the first available person, willingly shares credit when things do turn out good, takes the time to get to know your goals, works to inspire you to achieve them by giving you all the resources you need to be successful and makes decisions for the good of the team, instead of their own selfish motivations. Servant leadership can be most associated with the participative leadership style. The highest priority of a servant leader is to encourage, support and enable subordinates to unfold their full potential and abilities. This leads to an obligation to delegate responsibility and engage in participative decision making. Scholars generally agree that these characteristics are central to the development of a servant leader, listening, empathy, healing, awareness, persuasion, conceptualization, foresight, stewardship, commitment to the growth of people, and building community. Let's look briefly at each of these. The first quality of the servant leader is listening. In servant leadership, managers are required to have communication skills, as well as the competence to make decisions. A servant leader has the motivation to listen actively to subordinates and support them in decision identification. The servant leader particularly needs to pay attention to what remains unspoken in the management setting. This means relying on his inner voice in order to find out what the body, mind and spirit are communicating. The second characteristic is empathy. A servant leader attempts to understand and empathize with others. Workers may be considered not only as employees, but also as people who need respect and appreciation for their personal development. As a result, leadership is seen as a special type of human work, which ultimately generates a competitive advantage. Healing, a great strength of a servant leader is the ability for healing oneself and others. A servant leader tries to help people solve their problems and conflicts in relationships, because he wants to encourage and support the personal development of each individual. This leads to the formation of a business culture, in which the working environment is dynamic, fun and free of the fear of failure. The fourth quality is awareness. A servant leader needs to gain general awareness and especially self-awareness. He has the ability to view situations from a more integrated, holistic position. As a result, he gets a better understanding about ethics and values. The fifth quality is persuasion. A servant leader does not take advantage of their power and status by coercing compliance. They rather try to convince those they manage. This element distinguishes servant leadership most clearly from traditional, authoritarian models, and can be traced back to the religious views of Robert Greenleaf. The next quality is conceptualization. A servant leader thinks beyond day-to-day -day realities. That means she has the ability to see beyond the limits of the operating business, and also focuses on long-term operating goals. A leader constructs a personal vision that only he or she can develop, by reflecting on the meaning of life. As a result, he or she derives specific goals, and implementation strategies. Foresight. Foresight is the ability to foresee the likely outcome of a situation. 
It enables the servant leader to learn about the past and to achieve a better understanding about the current reality. It also enables the servant leader to identify consequences about the future. This characteristic is closely related to conceptualization. Stewardship. CEOs, staffs and trustees have the task to hold their institution in trust for the greater good of society. Servant leadership is seen as an obligation to help and serve others. Openness and persuasion are more important than control. Another core characteristic of servant leadership is stewardship. CEOs, staff and trustees have the task to hold their institution in trust for the greater good of society. Servant leadership is seen as an obligation to help and serve others. Openness and persuasion are more important than control. Commitment to the growth of people. A servant leader is convinced that people have an intrinsic value beyond their contributions as workers. Therefore, they should nurture the personal, professional and spiritual growth of employees. For example, they spend money for the personal and professional development of the people who make up their organization. The servant leader will also encourage the ideas of everyone and involve workers in decision making. And finally, building community. A servant leader identifies the means to build a strong community within his organization and wants to develop a true community among businesses and institutions. Servant leadership is seen as a long-term concept, which has the potential to influence the society in a positive way. It is believed that the exemplary treatment of employees leads to an excellent treatment of customers by employees of the company, and a high loyalty of the customers. In servant leadership, employees typically identify with, and are loyal to the enterprise. In addition, Servant leadership can be used as a principle to improve the return on investment of staff in all economic sectors. Finally, managers who empower and respect their staff get better performance in return. However, servant leadership also has some disadvantages. Problem one is the time it takes to implement this philosophy. Typically an entire organization has to make a paradigm shift towards servant leadership. It starts at the top, but all throughout the organization the change has to be made. The second problem may be lack of authority. Servant leadership can actually lead to a minimization of the authority of the manager and the overall management function in the business. When employees see their manager trying very hard to meet their needs, they are less likely to view her as an authoritative figure. Servant leaders make sure everyone gets a fair shake in life and are open with their communication, decisions, ideas, and problems no matter how challenging that may be for them. They typically work hard and push others to do the same. While your boss might have some of these characteristics, a true servant leader is all of these things at all times. Some famous servant leaders in history include Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Gandhi, or Mother Teresa. According to Greenleaf, to be a true leader one must ensure the highest priority needs of employees, customers, and the community are being served. The servant leader takes the time to listen to others, takes blame for failure, shares credit for successes, gets to know personal goals of others, works to inspire the personal best in others, is open and translucent in their communication, and makes decisions for the better good, instead of their own selfish motivations. Want to learn more about this subject? Then click on our website to view the full course. Why not subscribe and get access to free articles and special offers? Join the global career highway now.